Today's notes are over graphing square root functions, and we're going to show how to graph some square root functions with some parametric changes. So let's first go over the square root parent function, and I have it graphed for you right here. The domain for this function is from 0 to infinity, and we're including 0 in that domain, so we want to make sure that we've got a bracket right there. And then if you have negative infinity or infinity, we're going to always use parentheses when writing in interval notation. The range is from 0 to infinity, and again, we're going to include 0 in our range because we do have a point at the origin right there. Our x-intercept is at 0, 0. Our y-intercept is the same as our x-intercept at the origin at 0, 0. And the key points for this parent function would be 0, 0, which is your origin, then 1, 1, meaning when I take the square root of 1, I get 1, and 4, 2. When I take the square root of 4, I get 2. So 4, 2 is a key point. You could also say that 9, 3 is a key point, right? The square root of 9 is 3, so write 9 up 3. So when our little formula that we're going to use to show parametric changes, and you might recall the three days of transformations of functions that we've already looked at, the a value in front of this radical symbol shows your vertical dilation, right? So if that a value is greater than one, it's going to be a stretch. If it is less than one greater than zero, it's going to be a compression. And if it's negative in front, it's going to indicate a reflection across the x-axis. It's going to be opposite y. Your horizontal translation is shown by this h value right here. So it is underneath the radical, shows your horizontal translation. Are you moving left or right? And it's always going to do the opposite of what you think it would because it affects it by x minus h. And then plus k, your k value outside of that radical is going to show your vertical translation. How much up or down are you moving your entire graph? And your vertex is shown by, or not vertex, I'm sorry, but your um, what I like to call your origin or your starting point is found at hk. So let's go over some examples right here. The directions for these examples say graph the square root function given, then state the transformations from the parent function, its domain, domain range, and new starting point. So your new starting point, or what I like to call your new origin. So I'm going to say your new origin, if you will or your new starting point, starting point. Okay, so looking at this first example right here, f of x equals the square root of x minus four. So that is underneath the radical, so it's gonna be horizontal translation. What is the translation? Is it going to be left four or right four? It's gonna do the opposite of what you think it would. This is actually a horizontal translation, four units, right. So make sure you write that down. So what we're going to do, we're going to take that starting point at 0, 0, and we're going to move it right 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Our new starting point, or what I like to call the new origin, is at 4, 0. So if we, it's going to take the same shape as it did in our parent function. So those three key points that we wrote were 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2. So because all we did was move this entire graph, right four units, then from that new starting point, I'm still going to have points going right one and up one. That's like my new one, one key point, right? And right one, two, three, four, and up two. That's like that new four, two key point. And so that's what my graph is going to look like. When the whole graph, when the whole function is just translated four units right, it's going to look exactly the same. It's just going to, the entire function is moved four units right. So it affects every point by adding um, four to that x value. So your domain is absolutely affected. It's not zero to infinity anymore. Now it is four to infinity because you moved it horizontally. It's going to affect your domain, your x values. Your range has not been affected. It's still zero to infinity. And you can say new starting point, new origin. I'm going to write new origin 
because this is really like the starting point, right? Our new origin is at four, zero. And that's kind of how I like to write it. So if you want to say new starting point, new sign, just anything to indicate that's where we're starting now, but it's going to take the same basic um, pattern. We're from that starting point, right one, up one, right four, up two, right nine, up three, and so on and so forth. So looking at number two, f of x equals the square root of x plus five. Since it's underneath our radical, it's a horizontal translation. Which way? Horizontal translation, five units left. We're going to go left this time. So it affects it the opposite of what you think it would, right? So left five. So our starting point is at the origin and we're gonna move it one, two, three, four, five units to the left. That's our new origin, if you will. And it's gonna take the same basic shape as our parent function. So from that new starting point, right one, up one, that's like that key point, one, one, right, one, two, three, four, up two. And if you wanted to go five, six, seven, eight, nine, up three, you could. And that's what our function is gonna look like. So because this was a horizontal translation, it absolutely affected our domain. The domain is now from negative five to infinity. The range has not been affected. It's from zero to infinity. And let's write what that new origin or starting point, again, whatever you feel like writing, is now gonna be at negative five, zero. Let's move on to our next examples on the next page. So number three, I've got two times the square root of x. And let's, I'm actually gonna change colors here. Let's do this one. So two times the square root of x. When I've got a two in front of that radical symbol, that tells me that it's gonna be a vertical dilation. And since it's greater than one, this is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of two. A vertical stretch by a factor of two. When I have a vertical stretch by a factor of two, uh, that vertical stretch or compression, that affects the y values, right? Because that is our, um, that our vertical, uh, vertical dilation affects the range, okay? Or I'm sorry, it doesn't affect the range, but it, uh, it affects your y values. So two times the square root of x, I'm not moving left, right, up or down, I'm gonna start at my origin. And instead of going right one, up one, which was a key point in my graph, I'm gonna double that y value, right? So instead of one, one, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna multiply every single y value times two. Let me see if I can show this every single y value I'm going to multiply by two by two so instead of right one up one I'm going to go right one up two and four two was a key point instead of four two I'm going to go right one two three four and up one two three four I'm going to double that y value and so it's going to take that shape right so it's going to look like that it's a vertical stretch by a factor of two our domain stays the same. This did not affect our domain and it also did not affect our range. It was just a vertical stretch. So it affects the shape of it slightly. It stretches it. Every Y value is what is affected and there is no new origin. Okay, so it stayed at zero, zero. Let's look at number four. F of X equals the negative square root of X minus two. So there's actually two transformations going on here. This negative out in front tells me that we're going to have a reflection across the x-axis. All of my y values will be opposite. Opposite y shows a reflection across the x-axis. This minus two that's outside of the radical shows me that it's a vertical translation two units, which way? Down. Two units down. So let's first find our new origin. So the new origin, I'm going to move two units down. That's the only translation that's occurring. And I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. The new origin, again, starting point, whatever you want to write, just 
that's our like starting point, right? So at zero, negative two. So that's where we're starting. Now, normally I would go right one up one, right four up two, right nine up three, and so on and so forth. But in this case, because we've reflected it across the x-axis, I'm now going to go right one down one because we've flipped it. And instead of right four up two, I'm going to go right four down two. And it's going to look like this. So it's like the negative, um, negative square root of x minus two right here. So th did this affect our domain? It did not zero to infinity but because we flipped it and we had a vertical translation two units down it will affect our range range is going to be from negative infinity up to that highest point which is negative two negative two so let's move on to our last two examples i'm going to try to get through them fairly quickly Numbers five and six, we've got quite a few transformations going on in each one. And number five, f of x equals the negative square root of x plus one plus six. So that negative out in front tells me that we're going to have a reflection across the x-axis. And we've got some translations going on. We've got a horizontal and a vertical translation. So we're going to have some translations that plus one underneath the radical indicates one unit which way left and then that plus six indicates six units which way up so let's first find our new origin okay again that's what i like to call it new starting point new origin if we move that starting point one unit left and six units up that's going to be at negative 1, positive 6. So let's graph that point. Negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 1, 6. And now there's no stretches or compressions going on, but we have reflected it. So instead of it looking like this, we know it's going to look like this. Okay? So that's what that negative out in front will have us do. So our key points were... Um, you know, zero, zero, that's our starting point, then one, one, but instead of right one up one, we're going to go right one down one. And then four, two, instead of right four up two, we're going to go right four down two. And again, you could do nine instead of up three, you're going to go down three. You could keep going if you want, you don't have to, and it's going to look just like that. So did this affect our domain? Absolutely. We had a horizontal translation. So from negative one to positive infinity, we also had a reflection across the x-axis and a, um, a vertical translation six units up. So our range is also affected from negative infinity up to positive six, and we're including positive six in our range. Let's move on to our last example. F of x equals three times the square root of x plus three minus five. So we've got three different transformations going on. First, this right here tells me that we have a vertical stretch by a factor of three. By a factor of three. All the y values are going to be multiplied by three. They're going to triple. We've also got some translations going on. Translations right here. Three units which way? Does the opposite since it's horizontal? Three units left. And five units minus five shows five units down. So let's first write what that new starting point would be, that new origin, if you will, at three units left, five units down would show me that our new starting point is at negative three, negative five. So let's graph that new starting point, negative three, negative one, two, three, four, five. And then we had key points of 1, 1, okay? Remember, 1, 1 and 4, 2 were our starting, were our key points, right? Right 1, up 1, right 4, up 2. But because we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 3, we're going to take every y value and multiply it by 3. So instead of right 1, up 1, it's going to be right 1, up 1, 2, 
3, right? That y value is going to triple or get multiplied by 3. Instead of write 4 up 2, we're going to take that 2 and multiply it by 3 to get 6. So it's going to be write 1, 2, 3, 4 up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's going to look like that. This shows me a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. So the translations and reflections are what are going to affect your domain or range. The horizontal translation um, affects your domain. The domain is now from negative 3 to infinity. And your range, there was no reflection, but there was a vertical translation 5 units down. So it's going to be from negative 5 to positive infinity. And that concludes your notes over graphing square root functions with parametric changes. I hope it helped. Good luck.